Welcome back, man. Welcome back. Yo. Hold on, we got to do that a little bit better, Sean. Welcome back to Sean and Sean Talk About <laughs> Shit, bro. We back. Yeah. Huh? We back after about a year hiatus. Yes, indeed, I man. think last April was the last time we recorded. April 2023. Damn, bro. Yeah, I get lost with the time that you, when you get older... <laughs> Like, I, my, I just had a birthday. My birthday was on the 12th of February. Absolutely. Happy Today, birthday. Thank you. Today's in the 18th? Yes. Today's the 18th. All, I turned 46, right? That's crazy. <laughs> All last year, I thought I was already 46. <laughs> I'm not lying. Wait. <laughs> what? Please back up. Back up. How did you... How did you start thinking he was 46? What happened? I don't know. There must have been a miscalculation <laughs> somewhere. I <laughs> thought that I was 46 all last year. And then, you know, like a lot of people know, I'm starting to pursue my, my PhD in emerging media. Absolutely. And I said to myself, the mile marker is I want to have my PhD by the time I'm 50, 51 at tops. Okay, I dig that. So that made me start doing the math. I was like, okay, so I'm 46 now. I was like doing the math, doing the math. I was like, wait a minute. I was born in an even number year, so <laughs> I'm dying. This was last year. No, I'm like, God. I shouldn't be 46. Right. I'm 45. <laughs> so I went a whole year telling people I missed all of 45 because <laughs> you were 46. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, but I gained a year. Th this the question. <laughs> I gained a year. <laughs> the question: How was forty six last year though? Forty six was okay. It was okay. But then you, you I get to do it twice. Say. I get to do it twice. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I get to do it. That's a rare thing that's for dope. a human. And, well, to, yeah. That's a rare thing for a human to experience the same age twice that in one lifespan. And I'm I'm doing it. I like doing, it though. Doing it big. You're a trendsetter. <laughs> I feel like I feel like nobody else did that before. No. Right? Well. All right, so technically, right, uh -huh. that's kind of like people who used to lie about their age when they was young, uh -huh, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. You was 18 when you was 18, when you was 15. Right. And then when you was 18, you was 18 again. Right, right, right. That's true. You that's get a true. chance to experience that? Shit. That's true. That's true. And here's the other part, though. I said happy birthday to you four days early. Yeah. You could have been like, bruh, it's not today. It, it, it's all it's all in in the same black hole, bro. Like it, it's it's all in the same thing. Like I'm dead. It's like you know, like I do appreciate my birthday. It's another year. Thank thank yeah. God, I'm happy to be still here. But it's like the older I get, it's like I see people that are my age celebrating at clubs still. Yeah, I yeah. see people that are still my age going on long weekends. I see people that are my age on boats for some reason. <laughs> it's it for some reason for some reason yeah and it's like to me that that like i don't know like i don't get i could never i don't see myself but that's an aquarius like that's, that's an aquarius we don't we don't you, you know you know every you can see it everybody's like oh shit gemini's coming through <laughs> You heard you heard an Aquarius say it's my birthday this month. No, no, no. Did you hear it in January? No, no, no. I, first of all, <laughs> I don't even know when Aquarius was born. Right, right, right. I literally was at ballet school with my daughter the other day, and one of the moms was like, "Yeah, my birthday is tomorrow." I said, "Oh, happy birthday, you a Pisces?" She said, "No, I'm an Aquarius." I was like, "Oh, when do that start?" Like, so I definitely could dig that. But yeah, yeah, it's not. Damn, I thought know. you was a Pisces, Sean. No, you no, I'm Aquarius. I don't know. No, first I'm of all, all right, that's the other part. I uh -huh. don't know nothing about the, yeah, the, so the, the signs. Yeah, the, the signs is like I know I know Pisces and I know Aquarius because I know when they they start and when they end. That's it. Like the Pisces begins on the 19th of February, and the Aquarius begins on the 19th of January. Okay, so that's that's the it's only a full ones solid month. Yeah, that's the only, yeah that's the only ones okay. I know. So I mean I know all of the but what do they do? I like I tell people I'm a Cancer, they be like, oh yeah, and Sean is a true Cancer. Uh huh. I have no idea what you that means. You don't know what that means. There's no yeah. idea. I know what it means to be a true Aquarius because I have I have looked it up. Like it's to be <laughs> aloof. It's all it's basically all the negative. Yeah. Qualities while being a positive person. Yeah. So like, like apparently cancers are moody. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm not moody. I just don't like people all the time because uh -huh. people be saying stupid stuff. Yeah. I'm I not. too am struggling with being around the human race as I get older. Dude, my goodness, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm start, I'm an old black man now. <laughs> like I'll be getting annoyed from the simplest things. I'm like, yeah. God, that's annoying right yeah. there. Like. 
I don't like how people chew when they chew their food. Yeah, yeah. Close your mouth. Yeah. yeah. Close, close. Yeah. I, I asked, like, <laughs> I never heard, like, I, I pick it, you pick up on the weirdest things like people's breathing patterns. <laughs> like, is this, this motherfucker been breathing like that the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's nobody else annoyed by how you breathe. Yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah, you're right. You were like, this motherfucker chewing, he ain't got nothing in his mouth right now. What? Like, what is he chewing? Why? <laughs> this is my question, Sean. <laughs> Why is it that the older people get, the more they want to talk to you while they have food in their mouth? Yeah. I like, don't know. People who talk to me now, mm -hmm. they like take a bite intentionally mm -hmm. to talk to me. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like, I got this burger. I'm not going to say nothing to you mm -hmm. while the burger is whole. But mm -hmm. then I'm going to bite it, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to express my deepest. Concerns for the world. Yeah. It's incredible, yeah. man. Miss me with that. Miss me with all of that. That's how I know I'm getting old, though. Yeah. But I appreciate you for bringing your 46-ism yeah. yeah. to, the, to the space. And um, <laughs> it made me for real realize that, like, then it's 2024. So in July, I'm going to make 46 as well, sir. Mm -hmm. You're going to be 46. Yeah, in July. Bastille Day, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And la all last year, I was telling people I was 45. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right? It's uh -huh. like before July hit, I'm like, yeah, I'm 45, mm -hmm. 45. Then I hit 45. Mm -hmm. And I don't really feel no different mm -hmm. except for I'm noticing after my birthday, I started getting way more annoyed with what people got going yep. on. Yep. That's what it is, man. It's really, it's really unbelievable um, how you get caught up in that. Like, I don't know. It's just like, but but the thing is, everybody our age is going through the exact same thing, it seems. Everybody, every, <laughs> everybody I know is going through, every every woman I know that's single is going through some kind of religious uh, awakening. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> not no shade. I'm just saying what that's I noticed. Not, that's like, not shady at all. No. That is not shady. Uh, uh, at all. Every guy I know that that is 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 single or with child talk talk, talk about how much it's about their time. Yeah, it's my time. <laughs> it's my time to do this. It's my time to do that. It's like just just do it, bro. Absolutely, just do it. Like that's the only way it get done. Talk. I ain't never done nothing by just talking about it. Like, At all. I ain't never. Just, they say just, faith without works is dead, yeah, Sean. Just, just That's like it. the rule or something. Just do it. Because, like, you know, it's you telling me you're just going to get the uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you at that space yeah. of your black yeah. black old manism, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not even listening no more. You're no, just hitting them with I'm the, listening. The head but, nodding. But if, but if I know the character of the person. Oh, Okay. That's that's how involved I'm, that's how involved I'll be or or uninvolved. I'll so be. I think that's the, the like that's the thing about getting older, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Is that you start to learn the patterns of people, yeah. right? And then you start to be like, you ever noticed how old people used to be like, don't 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 fuck with them because they not they just talking, mm -hmm, right? And you'd mm -hmm. be like, no, I feel like they. But the old person be like, no, they just talking. That's because they know they've been around, right? right? And they right. know that these people just be talking. They, right. they don't have no intent on doing nothing. Right, right. But the talk sound really, really amazing. Right, right. Yeah. I, Shout so out like, to my granny now. Yeah, it's like you know, it's just just do it, bro. Like at this point in life, we halfway through it. <laughs> and they had a good yeah, taste. You right? halfway through it, like. <laughs> And that's if we live, if that's if I live to 90. Like, you got you know that, what I'm Yeah. Oh, I'm, what, I, what? I think I got a good 121 in me. Well, I, so I like, used to say. <laughs> God ain't let me off that easy, bro. Like, I used to tell people <laughs> I was good to 145. Okay, yeah. Here's the thing, that. though. I can see that. Here's the thing. Like, before Moses died, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you out on a little spiritual journey real quick. Mm -hmm. Before Moses died, you could get to, you know, 900. Look at Methuselah mm -hmm. now. Yeah, yeah, right. Moshe, right? Moses right. was the dude that, they, that the Hashem was like, nah, 120 is the max that everybody get. Mm -hmm. So, that's it. Okay. So, 121 sounds commendable. Okay. If you make it there, Sean, I'm, I'm rooting. Yeah. <laughs> but it looked like, according to scripture, we, we done at 120. 120 is the cutoff? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Why? Why do you do that? Why do you? Why, why you think? Why do you think that, that God cut that off? I feel like because it was a pretty solid number to get to. Oh. After one twenty, what you really expect, man? We already I talk. Mean, we have forty five talking about how people don't listen I, I see, and how we tired yeah, of listening to people yeah. breathe and, and eat. Yeah, I mean, I see people at 90, 90 80, 6 that are miserable though. Like <laughs> they are. <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so you think that's another forty years? Yeah, but. So that's like the thing. I feel like Third, yes, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's. Yeah, number, I mean, that's yeah, about right. Yeah, that's right, about right. Yeah, right. But like, what happens if you just like intentionally make people have to fuck with what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, once I turn fifty, all bets are off. Sir. Yeah, I'm not. I don't care about nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, nah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, 
I'm not. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I do that now, and you know what? You know what it is like. If I get when well, when I get this doctorate, it's just going to get worse with me not wanting to do stuff. <laughs> First of all, congratulations though. Oh, thank you. Because I just found out about the 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 PhD in emerging uh, emerging com- media emer- emerging media. Uh-huh. That is incredible. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like you need a good like name like you got to change your last name now mm. right like after you become a doctor of media right mm-hmm. maybe you know uh your last name can be like film or like uh you oh. know what I'm saying? like you be like something that goes with the field I yeah mean. Oh, it's like okay. dr film okay you know what i'm saying all right yeah i gotta think of a piece of uh just just a piece of uh static gear that used to just lay around our shop that nobody ever used and i'll change my name to that like um, Doctor Chip Chart. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> dude, that's incredible. You could be <laughs> Doctor Chip Chart. You could be Doctor Chip Chart cameraman. That's <laughs> that's that's Sean. Some random Doctor Back Focus <laughs> chart. Something something random. <laughs> Dr. Chip Chart is a real name. There's a dude right now who's like, this guy Sean is going to become a doctor and change his name to mine. His name is Chip Chart. That's that's a Sean. That, yo, I'm going to call you that for the rest yeah. of my life. Okay. I mean, for you, those of you out there that don't know, a Chip Chart is a legitimate thing in the world of television. If, if you're if you're working a professional place, Absolutely. it's a thing that's needed to. Um, Get your cameras looking matching. Uh, if you have a multi-camera <laughs> shoot, you need a this chip guy. chart to make every camera look. Listen, look every shot look the same. It's no way to wait, Doctor Chip Chart. That's official. <laughs> That's an official name, sir. But congratulations, though, for real, because um, you know, uh, I'm happy that you found a path that you like. Oh, oh yeah. I want to, I yeah. want to rock with that. And for anybody that I know that does media. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't think that anybody better than you could be a, a, a doctor of media game. Appreciate, that's a real life appreciate that. Thank you. It's going to be a hard, long battle, but it's, I mean, it's really not. I'm just trying to make it sound like that. <laughs> like, it's real. I mean, like, it's going like, to be the, long and arduous. Yeah, like, what did I already know? Like, you know, I mean, it's going to be a lot of writing. That's probably it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of writing and a lot of research, but a lot of the research I'll already know about. Absolutely. You know, there's. You know, I understand the history of television. I understand the history of film, and I understand new media. That so, is incredible. So yeah. I feel like that's that's just your cup of tea right there. <laughs> Somebody whoever designed that was like, uh, man, I got this guy named Sean, <laughs> Doctor Chip Chart Galloway. <laughs> I'll put him on game. <laughs> I'm rocking with it though, gang. I'll, congratulations. Thank bro. you. Thank you. What, what school you, you went to for? Uh, Boston University. Or be a terrier. Yo, I'm with it. <laughs> I'm with it, dude. Yeah, Boston University. So I gotta I gotta finish up a few courses that I'm in um for my masters at American University. And then after that's done, I'm gonna go right into the Locked PhD. In. Yep. Right into it. Yeah. There you have it. Mm-hmm. It's there gonna be fun. It. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really fun because it's gonna be a bunch of young punks in there to think they already know. <laughs> And then you're going to look at me as the old person that dresses cool, but then I'm going to school the fuck out of them. Not you just added the fact that you stylish in there. Like, I'm going to be the old person who dresses cool. Right. I'll be stylish for free. I'm with that. Yeah. But that, that is dope, though. And I do think that um, there's going to be some space for you to get give them a lot of history because mm-hmm. um, y- your intention on how you teach people. I've watched mm-hmm. you teach young people for a lot of years mm-hmm. as, as uh, mm-hmm. it relates to film. I think that the way you you approach, I think it'll be uh, kind of dope for mm-hmm. the people that's mm-hmm. around you, though. So, congratulations, gang. Thank I'm, you. I'm I appreciate really with that. that. I appreciate that. You did? Yeah. So, that I mean, that turned into to kind of like a uh, get off my lawn type segment, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Like, but I want you to get off my lawn because yeah. I'm almost 50 now. <laughs> get, don't breathe when you get there. Yeah, that, that turned into it. But that that's cool. We old. That's the space we in. Absolutely. This show is about what space we are in, you and I. Yes, like, Sean and Sean, we and talking about just, some people shit. just happen to like listening to where we are in our space because they can't believe that we are this fucked up in the world. That's <laughs> that's what it is, Sean. They're like, oh man, their life sounds incredible. I'm so happy I didn't have to go through none of that. Yep. All right. Well, we want to take a break and then we'll come on back and talk about we we'll talk about some sports. I'm with it. The sports is yes. Yeah, we talk about Let's some do sports. It.
Welcome back to Sean and Sean Talk About Shit. Welcome we back. back here. We chilling. We back. Um, glad you guys were asking about us. Yes, First indeed. of all, thank you. <laughs> and if uh, you weren't, you were. Yeah, there was a series of unfortunate and fortunate events that happened over the last year that kind of like threw us off. Absolutely. But we promise we back. Absolutely. And we, getting the, we got a studio space. We got a studio space coming soon. Yeah. yeah. This is a real big deal. Yeah, we're going to leave this, this harem. <laughs> and... <laughs> And and head out to a studio, an actual yes. studio that's going to be ours. Yes, um, that we can build and create and just do have just freedom. Yeah, it's so, going to be live, gang. We 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 own we own. Yeah, own it's going to be wonderful. So we're going to talk a little bit about sports. Uh, the three the uh, three point competition, the dunk competition, and the skills challenge was last night. Yes, indeed. Friday night for the NBA. They're in uh, Indianapolis yeah. uh, this year. Uh, Friday night was a celebrity game. I did watch the first half of the celebrity game, but. It's all about ESPN. Is all about Stephen A. Smith, and it's all about Shannon Sharp. Absolutely. If you like, they were the two coaches, and it was kind of hard to follow the game because <laughs> they had they had open mics on those guys the entire time. My God, and it was the, the, <laughs> of the the two people in the world, yeah. the whole entire yeah. world yeah. that you could put a microphone on, yeah, and leave it open, <sighs> like so. It was kind of hard. I watched the first half. It was enjoyable. I wanted Jennifer Hudson to score a bucket, but Shout she, out Chicago. she didn't play that long. I like Jennifer Hudson. I always have. <laughs> like, when, I really used to have a, a, a crush on her. Like, <laughs> like, it's like she was. I really like Jennifer Hudson. Let me give you a quick sidebar for Jennifer okay, Hudson. So okay. she did this uh, competition in Chicago called um, called Salem's Got Talent, right? At my okay. mom's church. And um, she won the competition, and then right after that, she went. To she won Idol. American Idol. So like everybody Idol. at the church was like, "That's that girl from the church." Okay. So, yeah, that's nice. Real life. What's what's up? Yeah, well, she's talented, man. Absolutely. She's a, she's a uh, EGOT winner. So absolutely one of what nineteen or twenty? I think it's twenty one total of those in the whole world. That's crazy. And dude. She's one of them. So good for her. Like I, I was, I was. It was good to see her out yeah. there playing basketball the other night. You know. <laughs> And apparently she's with Common. So, yeah, you know. shout out to Rashi. Yeah, she with Common. So, you know, they, they're a cute couple. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Chicago, bro. Yeah, yeah, they look good. Shout out City. <laughs> but, uh-huh. go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. So, we, I was going to say, you were saying you watched the skill competition. You were saying there was a very talented guy in that joint. Dude, that, that I like who's Anthony a right, Edwards. Who's a righty. He's a right-handed player. I've been liking this dude since he's about sixth grade, mm-hmm. right? Because I like LaMelo Ball. And mm-hmm. I like both of them playing against each other, and I like them playing together, right? Mm-hmm. But in the skills competition, this dude said he was going to do the whole skills competition with just his left hand, mm-hmm. right? And while he got to the three-point shot and he was, like, missing his threes, the fact that this man went through the skills competition with his left, yeah. that's a heavy lift, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. that says a lot about his skill set yeah. and about what he believes he can do. Absolutely. That's 100%. incredible, man. 100%. I'm with that. You know, I was, I, was, um, I was watching the NHL skill challenge. Everybody knows I'm a Lightning fan. Absolutely. And uh, there was one player from the Lightning in the skills challenge. And the skills challenge is a young young man's game. Absolutely. It's a young because <laughs> yes. you got to have speed. You <laughs> yes, know what I'm saying? that's part of the skill. Yeah. <laughs> so Kucherov, the, uh, the Kucherov was was the Lightning player that was in. He's a very popular player in the league. And I was like, man, he's a little long in the tooth. <laughs> so I'm watching these other guys <laughs> going through this shit, and they like 26, 24 seconds. They getting through this thing, and I'm like. How? It's no way. <laughs> How? What they had to do. So I'm like, all right, Kucherov coming up. He like number five. I'm like, I'm going to run to the bathroom because I've been drinking a gallon of water a day. <laughs> so I got to pee all the time. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm gonna go That's another old man quick. thing, yeah. but I'm with it. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to go pee real quick. I'm going to come back. I came back. Kucherov was all right. Them kids went so fast. <laughs> there was, he was five kids in front of them. Them kids went so fast. I miss Kucherov. He... Them kids was averaging 24, 20. Kucherov was 48 seconds. No. <laughs> I said, what happened? <laughs> the skills challenge is a young man's it's game. It's a young man's game. I was like, Cooch. Like, <laughs> I don't know how old you is, Kucherov. But if you older than 23, sir, don't do it. It's like, yeah, he still dominated. He still dominated in play. In play. See, but that's but, the trade-off, yeah, though, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You dominate because you have you have figured out the the essence of the game. Yeah. Right. You know how to do all the other stuff, other parts. When you're young, it's really about your speed and what you can offer by using your speed. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So that's something. Yeah. Bro. So yeah, going back to Ed- Edwards. He's he's a very talented kid, very talented kid, very 
and knows it. Shorty is he incredible. Knows he knows it. And he's fun to watch. Yeah. Like, because his personality outside of him being on the court yeah. is just a jokester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the it. other thing that happened that was that we can talk about that was of note. The slam dunk competition wasn't that great. Yeah. But uh Steph Curry versus Sabrina. Su- versus Sabrina Inescu, the white mamba, Woo! who was given that name by Kobe. Absolutely. Uh, because she is she's nasty. Absolutely. Um so <laughs> Steph won. Yes. But Sabrina but Sabrina put up a good fight. <laughs> but you going against the coldest three point shooter to ever live. Like and to me, Reggie Miller was that dude. I don't know. To me, Reggie Miller was what he did to the Knicks in, in, that, in that playoff game. It was 45 seconds? Yeah, I, I remember that. that. That was like nine points in 45 seconds. Under like pressure, yes. bro. I under remember pre- that. That was cold. To me, that that game right there alone made him the – until Steph. Yeah. I ain't seen nobody. I mean, you got Ray. You got Ray Allen. I can give you that. I you definitely got, like but, that. But under pre- <laughs> well, even Ray under pressure, too. Absolutely. But nine points in 45 seconds when, when you under – the that was, that was a lot. Yeah, that was a lot right there. I can't even front. Like, I'm sitting right here, like, reliving the gravity of that moment because I remember when it happened. With Spike right at his back. At his back. Screaming at him. Spike. At his back. And it was two steals in the play. Like, you had two steals and nine points. And they was all wet, though. Like, you yeah. wasn't like he was hitting the backboard. Yeah. He yeah. was all day. Like, yeah, he was, he was, he was unbelievable. Okay, I'll give you that. I saw that game. We, we saw yeah, that I, game. I, I, That's what I keep telling people today. I saw Michael Jordan play. Yes. And I've seen LeBron James play yeah and there ain't no comparison it's, it's different it's different it ain't no comparison lebron really does not all right people i told you sean people hate when i say it but like he reminds me of scotty pippen mm-hmm. he's the new version of scotty pippen mm-hmm. like he's a wonderful mm-hmm. role player right right he's a superstar role right. player superstar. and because right. of scotty pippen role players are allowed mm-hmm. to have that superstar mm-hmm. space mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but he not the he's not the to get you over the hump guy no Right, he needs to get you over the hump. Over the yeah, hump that's why yep. you got a Kyrie. Right, that's why you got a Dwayne Wade. Dwayne right, Wade, like yeah. you was gonna win championships with them regardless. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, ask yourself why you can't get it done with with with, with LA. You won the bubble championship. Mm-hmm. It was a bubble chip, G. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. everybody had COVID. Right, <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? The in play tournament, they they like the NBA made sure you won the in, the in play tournament yeah. this year. They they made a deep run though. They the NBA run. made sure that they won that fucking <laughs> tournament, Sean. They, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> look at the game. Look at how people was like, come on. Okay, i give you that. You, you mean that. the Lakers ran through the West, Sean? Yeah, i give you that. i give you that. All right. I mean, but like, <laughs> yeah, um, like, again, I, I, it's a complete, if you didn't see Michael Jordan, it, it, all the young kids out here, the, the Kaisenats, and uh, if you didn't actually see, my, you looking at Michael Jordan's highlights, don't do watching this man play for 15 years any justice. Like just looking at his highlights, don't do like one foot. Just watch a full one full game of Michael yeah, Jordan. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. you could watch LeBron James and you like you looking at him from the lens of what people can do in the NBA now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm saying look at Michael Jordan play mm-hmm. and watch how the NBA was trying to keep up with his style of mm-hmm, play. Mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. The NBA is like, okay, well, like. Remember, like people had a reason; they was fouling him on purpose. Mm-hmm. And the NBA is like, okay, we got to figure out how to like make sure that he get fouls called. He getting abused, abused. out the Jordan rules. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I definitely feel like when you when you think about uh, old school basketball, right? You do have to have that lens that mm-hmm. uh, attached to it. And mm-hmm. I really wasn't really thinking about how incredible that Reggie Miller run was. Mm-hmm. That shit mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. dope. Reggie Miller was that dude, but but like it's like like you know I mean we were talking about Sabrina and, and um, um, Steph. Yeah. Steph is the purest three point shooter I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And, and Clay Clay was that dude too at one minute. Clay had a till Clay yeah. got injured. Clay Clay might have went to another team and been that dude. Like he might have been. He might have been that dude. Like I'd be wondering like what is his is the confidence there because they together in in, in wrecking shop mm-hmm. and would he be as dope. If he yeah. went to a different spot. Well, he had a good game before the All Star break. He had a 30, yeah, 36 yeah. point game before the coming off the bench. Yeah. So we'll see if his confidence is back. You know, sometimes and, you got to do that. To and people. as far as as far as Steph go, though, Sean, like his dad mm-hmm. had a really pure jumper, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I can only tell you that because his dad played on my favorite team, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say Charlotte Hornets was my favorite team, favorite team, because mm-hmm. I was a Bulls fan. Mm-hmm. But Larry Johnson was my very favorite player in the NBA. Mm-hmm. So whenever he's playing, I'm watching everybody we play with. Mm-hmm. The squad he was on, 
You got Glenn Rice and Dale Curry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had the Splash Brothers yeah. before they was the Splash yeah. Brothers. I thought that Glenn Rice Jr. would be that dude. Like you know, your dad could hit anything. Your father. I remember Glenn Rice. They interviewed Glenn Rice, and they was like, "How?" They were like, "They was like, what do you see when you on?" He was like, "When I'm on, the back is just as big as a a fish net." Like when the big ass <laughs> nets that you use, he was like, "It's just huge." He was like, "I I just can't miss. That's what I see." And I'm like, "Dang, <laughs> that's like, incredible. That's man. crazy that you on you could be on like that, and that little cylinder becomes this big to you, and you can't miss. It, it, it's crazy. I watched this cat play at least three or four can't miss games. Yeah, yeah. right. But like, so the essence of what you was talking about about Reggie Miller right, mm-hmm. with the three the uh, the three jump shot three mm-hmm. threes in a, in a row." Mm-hmm. I think the reason why I didn't appreciate it is because they used to hoop back in the days. Yeah, they did. Every game was dope like that. Like, yeah. they would come down yeah. to the wire and you're like, oh, man, this is. Yeah. Um, you, you ain't missed no regular season NBA game. What? None. Not in the 80s and 90s. Bruh. You would miss the, you could miss a playoff game. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But nobody missed the regular season. Right, right. right. I feel like I watched every, like, all 82 games for the Bulls mm-hmm. for the whole 90s. From 1990 to roughly mm-hmm. about 98. You know, I, I was I was thinking about this the other day. I'm actually jealous of you because you grew up in Chicago. <laughs> it, it, like in the '90s, we didn't have nothing but the Orioles. Our team, the, but Kyle the, Ripken was kicking ass though. In the Kyle 90s. Ripken is one. <laughs> Kyle Ripken. I always say Kyle Ripken is my absolute favorite. <laughs> Kyle Ripken and Joe Montana are my absolute favorite pro athletes of all time. I dig that, and and that's because when the Colts left us to go to Indianapolis, in the in, they left in the, eight, the early 80s, 80, 83, 80, 83 mm-hmm. I think. But um, when you when you when when I came into the age of maturity and understanding football and watching football, the 49ers were very good. Yes. And they had, you know, they, they had, they were very good. They had a whip. Yeah. And that, that's what was on television here. Yes. That's why, that's why there's a lot of 49er fans in Baltimore. Like, that a, makes a lot. Sense. There's a lot of, because that's what we, that's what they put on TV here. We got to watch the 49ers. They didn't show the Redskins. That makes here. sense. They, they showed the 49ers. Damn. Yeah, because they were the good team. They, it, it, it was like 49ers or Cowboys. And uh, most people went uh, with the 49ers. That is, that's yeah. hella interesting. Yeah, my sister's, my, my youngest sister's still a 49ers fan. That is very yeah. interesting, man. Yeah. Like, for me, you know, I grew up in Chicago, so, like, mm-hmm. I watched the Bears. Even when it came to football, like, mm-hmm. The Bears is considered considered a storied franchise in the NFL, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, even when the Bears was bad, they still was NFL royalty, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah. damn, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, we never saw. That's we never nuts. saw Bears on the TV. We ne- unless the 49ers were playing them. We never saw Green Bay until Brett Favre came. Yeah, you didn't have to see Green Bay like, though. We, so. we never saw. The Falcons. We never saw these. That's things. crazy. That's dude. what we saw. The four San Francisco 49ers. I can run you the whole roster from <laughs> like the the Ronnie Lott years. Ronnie Woo. Lott was my favorite. All is my all time favorite strong safety, followed by John Lynch. And two amazing. Yeah, and amazing then D-back. and then like I watch positions like those like yeah. I can tell you the no the nose pet the nose tackles. I can tell you. <laughs> Everybody that was on those teams, and then I could go to the '90s teams with Ricky Waters, and, and they and, was even cold. Yeah, yeah. We, even, when they had a, Steve Young, yeah, a young, a young Terrell Owens oh, came. Like, listen, when, when, yeah, when Garcia was the quarterback <laughs> after Steve Young retired. Yo, Ryan, like, was Ryan Garcia right? Doesn't that? Yeah, name? Ryan Garcia. Bruh, yeah. yeah, number five. No, Jeff. Jeff Garcia. Jeff Garcia. Number five, right? Yeah, Yo, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. But uh, yeah, I, I can tell you about <laughs> all those teams. Like, you know, when I saw Steve Mariucci at the Super Bowl one year, I, I was in San Francisco. And uh, I was so excited, and I know I always wanted to see him because he was the 49ers coach. Absolutely. <laughs> and after everybody, he was the the new age 49ers coach. Yeah. And I saw him, and and he was going up an escalator, and I was coming down the other side, and I was like, and I was with uh, Holly <laughs> Holly uh, Patterson, and uh, I was like, oh my god, that's Mooch. <laughs> She was like, "Who?" I was like, "He was the coach of the 49ers. <laughs> right. Like he coached some four, some Hall of Famers." Absolutely. I was like, "He's big time." And she was like, you going to say something to him? I was like, I don't know. And then we got right to the point where we were passing. I was like, what's up, Mooch? <laughs> and he just kept going. <laughs> and he looked up. He was like, hey, how you doing? I was like, oh, shit, he talking to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, dude. I was like, what's Never up, mind. Mooch? Yeah, I was like, what's up, Mooch? 
<laughs> oh, I'm dead. Yeah, I was that. Yeah, I was like, whenever I see those people that I watched on TV, like, yeah, it's just like, man, I, I definitely have, could do I that. haven't met Cal Ripken yet, but if I ever meet Cal Ripken, like, I mean, considering that his owners group mm-hmm. just bought the the the, the Orioles, uh, the Orioles mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. He gonna be in the space a little bit. Yeah. Oh at yeah. Least. You did. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. I don't doubt that the opportunity is gonna present itself mm-hmm. for uh, for you and Kyle Ripken to yeah. be introduced to each other. Um, you know, speaking of those those players though on that 49ers team, right? I remember being about fourteen years old, and um, my cousin Joseph, and uh, you know, their family was in Chicago for a Taekwondo tournament, okay. right? So it's like go to Rosemont Horizon to go to the tournament, whatnot. And I come out to go get some popcorn, right? Mm-hmm. And I fucking ran into Roger Craig. Oh, wow. It was incredible. I was like, oh, my God, it's right. Roger Craig, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so, he was the guy. Bro, we talked for a good little minute. He shook my hand, gave me an autograph and whatnot. Then I went back to my seat, right? My little cousin Magic, uh, Joseph, big brother, was like, yo, I got to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So we started walking to the bathroom. I ran right into Ronnie Lott the, like 10 oh, minutes later. God. It was incredible. I was like, yo, I just saw Roger Craig. Oh. It was so um, do having the, the feeling of of those teams, yeah. right, and just being able to be kind of close to those people, yeah, yeah. it was a different essence, I think, in pro sports then because pro sports then was more connected to the people. Yeah, they, right? those those players were completely accessible. And you I would mean, see them out even then. Back then, they still was te- ca- catching commercial flights. Yeah, right, yeah, right, exactly. So like yeah. being far removed is the I think the essence of sports is a little bit different, mm-hmm. and I think that is the reason why people relate. To their quote unquote goats, mm-hmm. the way that they do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of goats out here today. Goats. <laughs> the goats. That it's like, yo, bro, if you played when I was growing if you was in the era that I watched, you'd be coming <laughs> off the bench. Absolutely. Like, you wouldn't even, you know. And like, that's for all of the sports. Yeah, that's like, for yeah, all of the sports, yeah. guys. Like, Shannon Sharp, <laughs> I was watching Shannon Sharp on um, First Take. Yeah. And they were talking about the NFL rules. And uh, they were going back and forth. And at the end, he said something to shut everybody else up. He was like, if I played in today, you'd have to add another 2,000 yards to my to my yardage Absolutely. and another 40 touchdowns to my total. Is he lying, though? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> is he lying? He, he is absolutely not. <laughs> he is not lying. Can you imagine... <laughs> Can you imagine if if Steve Atwater played in the NFL now? He couldn't. They would put him out the league. Yeah, he couldn't. They'd be like, sir, you got to go. You out the league. They would say he was dirty. Yeah. What? They would say he was dirty. This cat had the most st- – like, you didn't want to play against yeah, Atwater. He, he, like, he uh, wouldn't be able to do it. He wouldn't be able to play in the NFL. Bro, you yeah. know every time you get on the, court, on the field, them pads finna touch somebody's mm-hmm. life, mm-hmm. right? And people should be like, yo, he hit so hard. Mm-hmm. They would have put him mm-hmm. out the NFL. Mm-hmm. And he ain't never speared, like he ain't never no, leave his was, head. He was ta- it he was tackled, straight shoulders. Yeah. He tackled legally. Mm-hmm. They will Steve Atwater, you would get put out the NFL yep. right now. I mean, so would Bernard Pollard. Like and Bernard Pollard played in the last what ten years? Absolutely. He was at the, he was on the Ravens Super Bowl team in twenty twelve. <laughs> he wouldn't he wouldn't make it in today's game. With, with his style that's play. the that's the thing. Like people be like, oh well, you got to account for the finesse and the you don't. Mm-hmm. What happened was. They made it an entertainment product, right? Mm-hmm. They made the games faster by calling less calls, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, because people don't want to see people shoot free throws. I right. don't pay uh, $50 for a ticket right. to watch you shoot a fucking free throw. Right. Right. I want to watch you dunk on somebody, right? Right. So it's more breakaways. It's more like uh, they, they, they added penalties for catching people in the open field, I mean, right. open court. Right. It's an entertainment product. Right. And if you don't recognize it from the entertainment value right now, you're going to get stuck thinking that they're actually playing sports. Absolutely. Right. This is a, it's a, soup, it's a soap opera uh, per people. Right. I'm just laying out. <laughs> y'all know how I'm in NFL, NBA. Uh, listen, if you all have not been watching these, uh, these sports events, you all are not paying attention to the scripts that they're working on. <laughs> just saying. I don't know. Why the Baltimore Ravens Uh, have the number one running offense in the NFL. You go against the the, the, the dude in the playoffs. Yeah. Right? This is the point where 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 Lamar Jackson is about to prove that he is actually the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And then your coaching tell you to pass the ball? Yeah. Against the against the defense that was ranked 27 against the run. And you I mean, we could go down that rabbit hole. All, like we'll be sitting here talking all morning about that. 
Nobody was happy about it here. The only people that was happy about it was the people in Kansas City. I was in Kansas City the weekend. Of Super I remember that. I went out there for work, and <laughs> the people, when they found out I was I was a Ravens fan and from Baltimore, they were like, "What happened?" They were they was like, "Yeah, we know." They said nobody in here was expecting to win that. I talked to different people in different places, and absolutely nobody in Kansas City was expecting them to win that game. Nobody, because they shouldn't have won. <laughs> First of all, like this. Okay, I'm not gonna say a lot, Sean, but this I want to add this to the conversation. Uh-huh. Lamar Jackson, right? Mm-hmm. MVP mm-hmm. has for the entire year had the uh, the the ability to change plays at the scrimmage line mm-hmm. whenever he wanted to change the mm-hmm. play because mm-hmm. it wasn't gonna work out right, and he mm-hmm. could do whatever. Mm-hmm. How do you get to the AFC Championship and Lamar can't change none of these passing plays? Yeah. To run in place. Yeah. 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 He also wasn't feeling the pressure very well, which is something that he was he's been really known for. Like Absolutely. I don't know, man. It's one of those things like I used to be a real fanatic. I, I used to get I would be one of them dudes that'd be ready to break a TV. Yes. But I, I just if they don't care, how can I care? I mean I, I care, Sean. I, <laughs> this is my this is my transplant yeah, but team. The, ne- the next week they was at the Pro Bowl game. Slug, Kicking smiling it. and laughing like nothing. That nothing. Okay, speaking of smiling and laughing, Sean, yeah. I'm I'm sorry to change sports on you, but this hurt my heart. Uh-huh. I was on Twitter about two weeks ago. Okay, looking at some sports. Okay, Charlotte Hornets is down by 32 points. Okay, Lamelo Ball is injured. Uh huh. He on the bench. Uh huh. Two other players that's playing. Right. They on the bench with him, and these ones is laughing. I'm um, hysterically yeah. laughing maniacally. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but like when I was shorty playing any sports, when we was losing, my coach would say, um, "What the fuck do you got yeah. to laugh at?" Yeah, they didn't care. It was it was a different game. You play, then. you a professional athlete making millions of dollars. Yeah, y'all down thirty. Yeah, it's sad, bro. And it's you on sad, the bench laughing. It's a sad state of affairs, but you know, I try not to get too into pro sports anymore. Like okay. I try not to get wrapped up in it. My Orioles were also the number one seed, favorite to win the World Series. They got knocked out in the first, I mean the second round, yeah. the, the the first round they played by a team that barely made it into Absolutely. the playoffs. The Texas Rangers barely made it into the playoffs. Sean, I, then they go on a run and win the whole thing. Like, now you talking about disappointment? Yeah, two my Ravens and my Orioles both had number one seeds in the same calendar in the same year, both outstanding seasons. The Orioles won almost 110 games. Bro, they both had the greatest teams yeah. in their re- respective sports yeah. for yeah. the the year. Yeah, yeah. And they both got escorted out. Like, and it's just like, it's heartbreaking. Y'all better start watching these scripts. I'm telling you. Yeah, it hurts, man. So, like, now, but look at, all right, so look, they lose, right? Yeah. Then the following big news that come to the Orioles is what? Well, oh, the uh, the the uh, team is staying. The new or- ownership. The new team owner- staying. Oh yeah, yeah. A few new weeks ownership. ago, new ownership. Yeah. So now you got and Cal- they signed a, signed a thirty year lease. So now you got Cal Ripken mm-hmm. as the 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 guy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That owned the team mm-hmm. in the 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 building that Cal Ripken built mm-hmm. with a thirty year lease. Do you don't think that the that the MLB gonna get him a championship in the next the two M- years? Yeah, the MLB is definitely gonna get. Him. And, and what I what I'm happy about is that with Cal being the owner part and part of the ownership. We'll start to get things back in Baltimore with the MLB. Absolutely. You know, the MLB was very upset with the Orioles over the um, the Masson deal, the, cha- the channel that the uh, Orioles owner owned, um, and how he treated the Nationals. Absolutely. So the Nationals can only be play, play on Masson. They can only be seen on Masson. I didn't even know that. So it's okay. same, same yeah, thing yeah. with the Orioles. The Orioles can only be seen on Masson. Absolutely. It's because the person that owns the Orioles owned that team. When the Nationals came, he didn't want the Nationals because – we were getting a fair amount of people from D.C. Absolutely. The Orioles. So the deal they made was that, okay, they got to play on Masson. You know? That's crazy. MLB wasn't happy with that deal. Even though in the, in, in the, the Nationals became unhappy with that deal. Yeah. But the way that they punished the Orioles is stripping the All-Star game from us. You ain't know, been an All-Star game in, in, yeah, in Baltimore I definitely since the that. 90s. And we got a beautiful park. Absolutely. We got, the, we got one, one of the best parks. We got one of the best, one of the best, <laughs> of the best parks, parks in there. One of the best new age Absolutely. parks in baseball. I, I can 100% it, it attest to that. It ain't Fenway. It ain't Yankee State. 
but it is a beautiful place to go watch a baseball game. Not only is it a beautiful place to go watch a baseball game, it yeah. feels like baseball yeah. Yeah. once you get on yeah. the on the the uh the par- the property. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you cross the street, yeah. And you get like you standing by the statues or something yeah. like it, it feel like you yeah. at baseball. Yeah, I'm it, with it, that. It's a beautiful place. So I'm hoping that with 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 the uh, old leader, leadership moving out and ownership moving out and Cal and his guys moving in that they can start to broker some deals and we can get the All Star game. Absolutely. We, we're supposed to have the All Star game the year after it was in Cincinnati. I went to that All Star game to cover some media to get shout outs. Yeah. The next year it was supposed to have been in Baltimore. I was pumped because I was like, I'm gonna be <laughs> at in, home. I'm gonna be down <laughs> on the field, looking up at people I went to school. Like, yeah, yeah absolutely. I made it. Yeah, I was so hyped. I was like, it's gonna be at home. Yeah, run. No dice. It's gonna be at home. I was getting cool with Adam Jones because I always wore my <laughs> Oreo hat, <laughs> and, and, and they always say, "Don't wear the head of the team." I like the Orioles and wearing my <laughs> Oreo hat. And I would be down on the field at the and Adam Jones would be like, nice man, you got it on again. And we start talking. We absolutely. Talk. And then I was like, it's gonna be in Baltimore next year. Yo, I was like, I'm from Baltimore. <laughs> he was like, we're gonna put on. Yeah. Then it got stripped from Baltimore that uh, two months later and put in DC. That is incredible. They put man. it in DC and it became the Bryce Harper show. I re- I remember that game. Yep. Yeah, that's when that was like Bryce Harper breakout yeah. uh, party right yep. there. It became the Bryce Harper show. That is incredible. They stripped it and they gave it to the team that they felt got punished in that bad deal. <sighs> Look at that. Yeah, sports history for yeah. you came from Sean, huh? Yeah, yeah. Sean and Sean talking yeah, about talking sports about history. Shit. Huh? I actually met Bud Selig, um at at the was it, which it was one of the All Star games. I met him and Frank Thomas. I didn't realize what? how big Frank Thomas was. Yeah, he is monstrous. They call him the, what, the, big, the big hurt. hurt. Yeah. I didn't realize how big, how tall he was. Yeah, I seen this dude in, the first time in person when I was probably about 11 at the yeah. Sox game. Like, yeah. So we was at that All-Star. I forgot what city he was in. But um, I was with Jamin. Jamin was like, hey, is there any way we can get, he asked one of the people, any way we can get a shout out from the commissioner. And he was like, oh, yeah, the commissioner's incoming. We, we can get you a shout out. I'm like, cool. They was like, just stand right here. So then we standing there like five minutes later, a team of people comes up to yeah. us like follow us. Yeah, <laughs> like what? It's the like where are we thing. going? Like we about to get knocked off? Like they they look like they look like gangsters. Yeah, like we about to get killed because we asked for a shout out, man. Absolutely. Bro, they took us in the back, and then this big ass door opened, like a garage door opened up, and this this Escalade pulled in. This dude jumped out the Escalade. Rolling, let's get it. Like, you rolling? <laughs> I'm like, huh? Like, <laughs> this was his last year in charge of baseball, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this dude is a G right now. Like, he don't even realize how cool this looks. Then, bro. <laughs> like, he jumped out. Of, like, somebody told him on the way in that he got to do it. There's a team, there's the, 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 the DOD is here, and they want you to say something to the troops. And he was he had his message. He jumped out. He was like, "Let's go, let's go." <laughs> I was so, like, "This dude is professional." But that's how, <laughs> it's wild when you're trying to get a, 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 um, a shout out from a commissioner of a professional yeah, yeah, sports league yeah. because they treat him like they're the president. Yeah, right. Yeah, they did the same thing when we went to get Roger Goodell. Uh-huh, right. Uh huh. And it was like they said, "Okay, well, you all might be able to get Lady Gaga because she coming past." Uh-huh. Like they was like, "Oh no, no you, you all step back and get everything ready," and then Roger Goodell's coming through. Like. <laughs> You know, when he came up, he's like, uh, hey, you guys wanted to shout out real quick. Which guys are uh, are the troops? Yeah. Right? So the two guys that was in uniform, you know, they stood next to him. He gave him the shout out real quick. He gave him the quick little yeah. look. Yeah. And then he kind of, he's like, is that is that everything? Yeah. So yeah, Kamish, that's that's uh, that's it. Yeah. Did he just kind of scurry off? But he had like yeah. 40 people. Yeah, he had like 40 people. He was like, he was like, Buzz Selig was literally walking in the middle of a circle. There was a circle of people, Absolutely. and he was in the middle of the circle, and they were all walking in unison. Absolutely. Like, they practiced that shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> they probably do shot it. <laughs> it was crazy. i never seen nothing like it. And every, Crafty security and I, service. And, and, and he, I swear, I saw the same thing with the Ravens owner, too, um, at the New Orleans Super Bowl. Okay. And they were walking, and they walked past, and he was like, all right, guys, 
I'll see y'all at the media party because you know they can do the big yeah, media yeah. party that's fun and shit. Yeah, media party. I see great. y'all at the media party. So he, I'm like, we like, all right, sir. So he walking. He got the circle around him. People come up to him. Somebody in the front like, no. Yeah. <laughs> person, person come from the person on this side like, no. Yeah. They still walk. They just yes. keep walking. Like, yes. I'm like, yo, that is so. Cold. I need that though in my life. Sean. <laughs> I was like, that is cold. So this, the, I know we got to get up out of here for this segment, but yeah, like, this yeah. the last little deal, right? Um. <laughs> College sports, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. As it pertains to college sports, uh-huh. something phenomenal happened recently. Okay. Can you tell the folks what happened recently? Talking about Caitlin Clark. Absolutely. Yeah, she, she a beast, bro. Caitlin Clark. She, Caitlin Clark broke the uh, NCAA record for points scored. Absolutely. All time. Absolutely. And she's cold. Absolutely. She cold, She did the bro. thing, yeah. and y'all got pissed off because she did the thing. Well, you can't see me. Right? But she then she like, broke the record. Like, though. let's not get mad at athletes. <laughs> athletes are supposed to have that edge. You're supposed to. You're supposed to have that that cockiness. She don't come off as a cocky person. She do come as a, off as a person that demands the best out of herself and her teammates. That's how, and, and, and some, that's, that's, she, to me, she kind of got that Jordan feel. Absolutely. Like, so, she, she, dem- she, she, she not cocky. But she demands the best of herself. Um, you know, and nothing wrong with that. That's how the greatest play. Yeah. Ain't it? Yeah. I mean, legit, yeah. when we think about all right, so I'm a I'm a I'm a refrain for the first couple seconds, right? And mm-hmm. talking about uh people who are in the comparative space as as far as identity, mm-hmm. right? But let's go with a person like Magic Johnson. Okay. Right? Magic okay. Johnson comes out of college and he's like extremely confident. Yeah. Right, he fucking wheels the Lakers into a championship. Into a championship out of nowhere. Right, right. Like that's that's what we that's when the confidence end, we're talking about. All about the Celtics. When we talking yep. about um, when we talking about confidence, we talk about the same type of confidence <clears throat> that um a Tom Brady would have. Right, right. You come into the league and everybody's like, ah, oh, this guy's not gonna be the guy. But right. then like fucking six championships later, right. They have to respect the fact that you can't. You showed up looking like you wasn't ready to play football. Right. 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 So in terms of Kaylin Clark, yeah, she did the thing. Everyone's like, oh, Angela Reese finna get on her ass. Like, but Shorty is cold. She yeah. knew she was cold. Yeah. She was calling attention to her game. Right. Because they wasn't paying attention. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I ain't mad at you, Shorty. Yeah. I'm mad at you. Like you know, like the one thing that you know, all you know, when people win awards, they I don't mean, just Reese, not Angela. Yeah. Reece, uh, when you when you win awards, not not sports, but I'm talking like when you win Emmys, when you win Grammys, when you win. Oscars, when you win, you know, Absolutely. Pulitzer Prize, you don't win those awards unless you put in for them. Absolutely. You got to put in. They ain't just watching and saying, oh, that was a good movie. We picking that. You got to enter it into the competition <laughs> Absolutely. to be the best. Absolutely. If you don't enter it into that competition, ain't nobody going to know. You got to make people call it. You got to call it to people's attention Absolutely. how good you are. Absolutely. And if you're not doing that, what you're you doing? You're gonna be an unsung hero. What you doing? You're gonna be an unsung hero. So, Caitlin Clark, shout out to you. Keep going with you. I'm doing. up on you. Keep doing. I am up, up on you. you. Up. Okay. Congratulations, yep. gang. You. You oh, Angel thing. Reese, you're still doing your thing too. Angel Reese, but, you cold too. Yeah, yeah. You dig? But we, I know you cold. Yeah, we up on both of y'all. Absolutely. And, and thank y'all for changing. First of all, thank mm-hmm. y'all for changing how mm-hmm. people was uh, was identifying with women basketball. Mm-hmm. We already know from from my research, right? Um. The, the 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 vast majority of people who consume women's basketball is like three to one. I think was was men, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now that women are starting to get into women's basketball, I think that's that's pretty clever. But shout out to Andrew Reese mm-hmm. and for Caitlin Clark for for putting people in tune with, with what's going in on in the college game. Absolutely, yeah, in the college game. Welcome back to Sean and Sean talking about shit. Welcome back. Welcome back. So current events, a lot's been going on. Absolutely. We missed a whole lot to talk about that I think that people would have loved to hear our <laughs> thoughts over the last year. Um, but man, it's some wild stuff going on yes. right now. Yes. And I don't know where to begin. All right. Well, let's start. Let's start with uh uh AG Letitia Smith in in uh the Southern jurisdiction of Manhattan, right? Uh-huh. Uh hit Donald Trump with the three hundred fifty four million dollar deal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a big blow. And he also got banned from practicing business practices in New York Absolutely. City for three years. Absolutely. That's crippling. That's a huge blow, man. Yeah, yeah. 
That's crippled. Considering that's the main space where your where your, your money come from. Yeah. That's a big deal, man. So my question This is my question. What you got? So to run for president, to hold even to hold my my job as a government official, I can't assume a certain amount of debt. Absolutely. I every year I have to fill out a form. I just filled it out Absolutely. Last, this last week. <laughs> saying that I haven't incurred any debt over a certain amount of money. Absolutely. If I if I'm working part time, I have to tell what that job is. Absolutely. Everybody. It's in, called a financial disclosure statement. Everybody in the government, that's Absolutely. a government employee, <laughs> has to do this form. Yes. I don't. I'm assuming the president does too. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's a government employee. Absolutely. How? Okay. <laughs> so let me adjust my baby. <laughs> How? <laughs> How is this man with three hundred? We know three hundred fifty-five million dollars. Yeah. That's a debt. That's a debt. One hundred percent. Three hundred fifty-five million dollars in debt. That's just the debt from that case. Yes, absolutely. There could be more. <laughs> How is he still eligible? All right. So, to run for president. So technically, that debt ain't ain't just personally his, right? It's this. Okay. That's it's, his company it's, it's debt. Company debt. He okay. do have. He does have another case though with uh with Stormy Daniels. That's a defamation case. Okay. Uh, I'm not I'm sorry. Not Stormy Daniels. That's uh he had another defamation case that happened last last week or the week before where the uh the person was awarded like I think like thirty something million. Okay. So like that's an actual debt. Okay, but that's still a lot of. Oh, you're talking about the old news reporter? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That he that he uh, sexually absolutely. They said he sexually assaulted. So him. now, if you think about it in terms of how he is speaking, right? Mm-hmm. Former president says, "Oh, this is a you know a political witch hunt mm-hmm. because my political opponents don't want me to run for president." Mm-hmm. They right? absolutely don't. And this like, is, let's, uh, let's come. <laughs> we don't, bro. That's like, that. <laughs> but that's how, that's how you get him to not run for president, though, right? Uh-huh. You make this large amount of debt that he has to, that he has incurred, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Now you have to report this on your financial disclosure. You are at the mercy of anybody who can give you the money mm-hmm. to to like make these this debt go away. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. um, that's definitely a, a interesting place to operate in, yeah. but. Yeah. The political space is going to be interesting to watch just because there is no clear like front runner for either of the major political parties. Right. Right. And then there are really, really strong candidates in the third space. Mm. Right. Um, but then you got Fannie Willis. Right. Yeah. Who is the person who appointed the prosecutor for Donald Trump's like election trial mm-hmm. in uh in in um Georgia they called they found found when that she and the dude had an affair yeah. or they had a relationship there yeah. wasn't an affair yeah. they had a relationship right and then they kind of start putting her on trial right it wasn't a fair, let's, let's clear it up it wasn't a fair it was not an affair the guy, the guy was divorced he yeah, was, it was, he, a, was going, he was divorced or going through proceedings yeah it was divorced. a they was in a like a regular relationship okay. so i don't want no, nobody to think that it it wasn't nothing bad about the relationship mm. the reason why it came into question though is because he went on a trip right and she paid for his trip in cash mm-hmm. right it was mm-hmm. like an expense trip but he pay, she paid for it in cash mm-hmm. and they wanted to know where where she get this type of money in cash from i saw what her father said when they asked her that question what he said he said it's a black thing uh, why did he say that though <laughs> do you know why he said that because black people have been taught to pay for everything in cash yeah but the like, I, if so you got it in cash pay for it in cash two days before that when fanny was on the stand uh-huh. they asking her where the money came from uh-huh. and she's like I mean, it came from a variety of sources. So the lady keeps saying, the, the other uh, attorney keeps saying, well, so you don't know where it came from. So then she goes like, well, I had this thing happen. I put a little money over there then. And then, you know, her excuses was regular black people excuses. Right. If you don't know no black people who never kept money under the, the, the mattress. Under the mattress, right. Where are you from? Right. Yeah, that's the thing. That's an actual thing. Yeah. So she took that to court. Her dad came in and was like, nah, this is what it is, gang. So, mm-hmm. you know, it is what it is. And that's... That's how, that's how the that's the political space that we operate in mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The 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 state's attorney, right for yeah. the state of Georgia, yeah, has to answer questions about her relationship because the former president is being indicted for election fraud. Now yeah. that don't even make sense if I said yeah. that to you. Yeah. Yeah, she lit it up on the on the on the stand the other day too. Absolutely, she lit it up. She she defended herself well. And you know she gave him, 
She gave him the same fire that they've been trying to give her. She gave it back. That's how you got to do it, though. Yeah, yeah. Right? And if you understand, right, like, like this is what I be trying to tell people. When people are 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 dealing with President Trump, or former President Trump, mm-hmm. you got to play the same game that he played. Yep. His whole game is in the media. Yeah. If he could cook you in the media, you done. done. You done. Yep. He's a, he's a television personality. He cooking you in the yeah. media. Once he gets you in the media, mm-hmm. and you like, damn, I don't got no legs to stand on. Mm-hmm. He gonna berate you, call you all kind of stupid people, mm-hmm. right? And you gonna stand to take it, and you gonna try to defend yourself about against being stupid yeah. while explaining to people to a that that's like reliving this stupid man's thing yeah, yeah. right like the stupid idea yeah that so I, it is what it is yeah yeah yep. and then lastly sean mm-hmm. in terms of legal news mm-hmm. one of the lawyers for the young thug uh oh geez rico case yeah has now been criminally indicted yeah on gang charges she's an idiot have you did you see her videos her her instagram <laughs> she's <laughs> her tiktok she's an idiot how does she, like she she's one of the people that make you think it ain't that hard to get a law degree? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm sure that. it's very hard and very it challenging. probably is very difficult. <laughs> God dang, girl! Bruh. Right? <laughs> what in the world? I mean, I mean, she was po- she put up the paperwork and was like, "Yeah, they're gonna get off." What? <laughs> like, so a lot. I guess a lot of people don't really know like how what she got caught for. Mm-hmm. So this is what happened. She was uh, privy to a meeting mm-hmm. with the authorities, mm-hmm. right? That was talking about uh, bringing forth an indictment. Right. This don't have nothing to do with the young thug case. Right. She then called the person. She tipped him. She tipped him off. And told him to get rid of the phone that he had because the police was getting ready to indict him. Okay. So I, fe- so I, I get it. She watched a whole lot of power. She she thought she was. Is that what they doing on power? They do that on power. They got crooked lawyers all over the place. I, I don't power. frequent power. They got a, they got a lawyer on there. He he was crooked as I don't know what. He was helping did get rid of bodies. He was getting giving out <laughs> burner phones. Don't this does sound and, like and, her? And, and same like on the new every episode of Power got a crooked lawyer. Every every power <laughs> got a crooked lawyer. She watched too much power. That's what they do on power. So right. that's what happened. Okay, I did that. She she got her her circuits crossed. She forgot <laughs> this was the real world, though. My bad, fifty. I, I don't watch it. powers. I get it. I get it. I understand now. I understand. I'm sorry. So that's what she took it from. I, I, One hundred. I bet you. I bet. I bet you. That's where she got that shit from. I mean, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell, like, because on the power. The the ghost book power two uh, power two book ghost book whatever it's called the one where his son is now because you know uh, the original character got killed yeah. in, in the first show I didn't know that but I his, I, I they, did they did a spinoff with his son okay who is now in college and Method Man is his, is his crooked lawyer okay yeah he's right. doing some cruddy stuff <laughs> that's what this girl thought she was. <laughs> That, girl, they got people writing that shit for yeah, them. Absolutely, that ain't real. It's not real life. Do you think if Method Man tried that as a real lawyer, he would be out in these streets <laughs> like he is on the show? It's a TV show. It's a TV show. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so uh, <laughs> that's what I feel. See, it would have more weight if I was Doctor Chip Chart. See, if I was a doctor Dr. of me- if I was a doctor of media, they, what's your, I can what's help, your professional pain? I can help people separate. Real from fit because you got women out here today thinking that Shake Shack ain't a good first date. I saw that video this morning <laughs> for lunch. Oh my goodness, for we lunch. going there for we lunch. First because, of all, because they watching Tyler Perry and all these Sean. guys put up all this stuff that's TV is fiction. Sean, everything at Shake Shack costs five dollars. <laughs> everything so, so. And you can't buy nothing at Shake Shack for under five, bro. Buddy said, "Why? First of all, first, why the, the fuck f- did she have two chicken the sandwiches? Food, the food was, the table was full of food. Why did she have two chicken sandwiches? I think he undershot us when he said he spent fifty dollars. <laughs> he spent about eighty or ninety. Bro, then the second question is, if you ain't want to eat at the chick at the Shake Shack, yeah, why did you order seventy three dollars worth of chicken sandwiches? Yeah, yeah, I'm disappointed. Uh, yeah, she, uh, did she eat them sandwiches though? I doubt it. Buddy was like, we could leave." And like he yeah. was angry, yeah, visibly. Yeah, I wouldn't eat. I, you know what? I probably would have ate my food. This is my other. But I, I wouldn't have been happy. This, 
I wouldn't have been happy sitting there. So this is my other part, Sean. Uh-huh. I don't know if you know this about me, right? But okay. I struggle with knowing um, like what's real and what's not. Okay. Right? Okay. I so I that. take everything for face value, uh-huh. right? And I uh-huh. like I that's why I can't lie and shit because yeah. I just don't know when people are being real. You don't being know fake. when. Yeah, yeah, I right? get it. Um, I'm starting to think that a lot of these videos that I'm seeing of people having these type of disputes in restaurants or in the car mm-hmm. and shit like that, it's a setup. It's a skit. You are giving me a skit because you want to go viral. Everybody yeah. want to be famous now. Yeah, yeah. right. I under trust me. If it's one person in the world mm-hmm. who understands that you want to be famous, mm-hmm. right? It's me. Mm-hmm. 10 years old, I was practicing my signature because I thought I was going to the NFL. Mm-hmm. After that, when I turned 12 and I realized I could rap, I thought I was going to be a rapper. Okay. Right? So okay. I always wanted to be famous. Not to the point of creating skits that could be harmful okay. to the community. You <laughs> right. get what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So if y'all out here skitting, that's a whole nother thing. But if it's going to be something, some type of really, uh, something that we could bring some conversation from, I'm with that. Right. Right? But right. if we just, just trying to get famous, gang... Don't yeah. please don't keep doing yeah, that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's just whack. Yeah, yeah. You but did. yeah, I've never, I've honestly never been to Shake Shack, but I've heard people say talk about the prices, sir. I've never, I've never been. I've never been to Shake Shack. Sure. I, I, but I, I've been to other places that are like, I guess, comparable to Shake no, Shack. No, it's nothing. Really? It's nothing. Really? First of all, For, this one, <laughs> this is this pro- go in ahead. my mind. I have an issue with Shake Shack. Go ahead. How do you go to the bank? And ask for money for a business called Shake Shack and put a hamburger as your logo. How? That is, that's marketing 101. <laughs> Does bait and switch? Yes. <laughs> huh? I'm calling it this place. It confuses me, though. Sean, I'm it's calling Shake this Shack, place Shake Shack. But you, got, but you got a hamburger on your logo. Because what, what you going to want when you get a shake, Sean? <sighs> I don't know. Hamburgers man. and shakes go hand in hand. Yeah. You dig? So when I, I see you, when you see this green hamburger on my logo, mm-hmm. it's inspiring you. Remember, the color green inspires you to eat. Yeah. So you're like, damn, I really want a burger. Mm. Right? He's like, damn. But then it's called Shake Shack, so I want a shake too. I've already convinced you, you got to eat and drink with me. That's wild. That's wild. I I get it. I, I mean, I get what you're saying, <laughs> but... You got you got to have what you do on the sign for me. <laughs> you, got, you got to have what you do on the sign. <laughs> I'm old fashioned, you know. That I, was, <laughs> was, okay. My, my grandfather didn't go to Wendy's because he didn't like square hamburgers. He said shit was weird. He ain't go to Wendy's. He said no, no more Americans eat square hamburgers. That's what he said. Because where did they get it from? Why they square? Who's the designer of the square hamburger? Right, man. This, I feel Wendy's like this. is delicious. So I don't even. I don't, I'm proud to say I haven't had fast fast food since this year started. Really? Yeah, I haven't. You are doing well. I have sir. not. But Wendy's is good. <laughs> but why? Why the square hamburger? Why the chicken ain't square in there? Why they square the hamburger but not the chicken? Now that's the question. That's inquiring minds right there, yeah, Sean. Yeah. So, damn, that's a really good question. I yeah. feel like. <laughs> yeah, but like when you go to a marijuana. Cannabis, John. Can- I mean- We've been talking about this for years, okay? <laughs> Good night. When you go to a can- this guy. <laughs> when you go to a cannabis dispensary, like you know what it is. I mean, very, actually, you can- don't. You you don't know what they are, <laughs> no. but you know what they are. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you look at the. It's buildings. like McDonald's. Yeah, John. It's like like because they're all they're all different with their branding, but you you know you could drive by and be like, oh, that's th- that definitely looks like. A yeah, place where they sell cannabis. It's like McDonald's, right? Yeah. You see the McDonald's, and they might all look different, mm-hmm. right? Some of them you can go in, and you'd be like, you know what? I might want to eat here. Mm-hmm. But some of them, you're going to tell yourself, I wouldn't eat here if everybody paid yeah, me to eat that's true. Here. What do you think about those new uh, dystopian-looking McDonald's? The ones that look like they're out of the Hunger Games. <laughs> Like, have you seen how they dress in there? They don't even look like they're having fun anymore. I mean, nobody's having fun working at a McDonald's, probably. Yeah, McDonald's but, is one. That's one of the funnest jobs I ever had. But like, have, have you seen what their new buildings look like? I, I haven't. And they, I'm. They look like um, <laughs> they look like old school. I I don't know. It's like an update, but it's like gray. Like everything is gray. No, I'm not with the muted tones. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 done. Yeah. 
I it's, feel like we at the space of Demolition Man. Exactly. Right? That's what, it's, that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of Demolition Man, the new McDonald's, and the outfits they have to wear are very, like, um, <laughs> it looks like the police uniform from nope. uh, uh, from Demolition, Demolition Man. Man. Wait till yeah, they start they, with the short songs. War. Yeah. Wait, they start with the short songs. That's when you know it's over. <laughs> I like these short songs. It's for commercial, Chandra Bullet. But thank y'all for tuning in, though, gang. Uh, yeah. We happy we came back. Yep. Well, I'm happy we came back. I'm I can't happy speak too. for my man Sean. I'm very happy we're back. I can't wait till we get in our space and we can expand. Yeah. We're gonna have more cameras. Absolutely. It's, it's gonna be a beautiful. It's gonna be a labor of love and effort. Absolutely. And, and we we don't do this to go viral. Um, we don't do this to make money. Absolutely. We, at some point, we hope that we can get to that point. But yeah, to get there. You know, we we're just trying to grow this thing organically, and we promise we ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Again. Yeah, that's it. We we we, <laughs> we had to get some things straight. Yeah, we here. we locked in tight though, like school lockers. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we back, my brother. Absolutely, it's good to be back. It's All good right. to be back. Hey, y'all oh, come. Oh, re- so, rest, rest in peace to Mr. Navali. Rest in peace, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely, gang. Yeah. Uh, your struggle was definitely felt and understood, and I'm I'm just sorry that you never got to get with your family again. So, but your name will ring forever. So, Absolutely, gang. Rest in peace, sir. Thank you.